Ask Reddit by Zombeam007. What was normal 20-30 years ago, but is considered a luxury now? New furniture made out of real wood. Nothing angers me more than paying luxury prices for fiberboard framed garbage. Owning the software you purchased. I hate that everything is a subscription now. I miss being able to just straight up buy Microsoft Office, now you need a subscription. There's a hidden way to buy a license, but it has very basic functionally and limited apps so it's kinda useless. Even my printer needs a damn subscription to use the ink that came with it, which I hadn't realized or I wouldn't have bought it. Paying no more than 30% of your income in rent. I lived in poverty housing and this was how they determined our rent. It was 30% of mom's income, regardless of how much she was making. That was 20 years ago, not sure what starving kids do today. Not being expected to be reachable 24 stroke 7. Why pay for a phone if you're not going to use it? I pay for the mobile computer the phone is attached to, the phone is just one of thousands of functions. Free driver's education classes taught in all high schools. Concert ticket prices. Sure does seem like ticket prices went from $50 to $200 really fucking fast. I remember as a kid, where I live they would allow people to just visit an area of the airport from where they could see the runway and flights take off they didn't have to pay anything for it people would spend hours just looking at flights take off and land. Edit, to everyone saying this is still doable in many parts of the world that's great. I haven't been to those parts of the world yet and where I come from one would still need to pay a certain amount to get in and watch from a glass cabin or so. Back in the day, there would just be a gate on the airport ground, a small barricade where you could just stand for hours and nobody would bother. Deleted. Retirement plan built into your job. Or just retiring in general lol. Farmers markets. You used to be able to go down and get fruit and vegetables cheaper than the grocery store. Now it seems like they charge 3x more than stores do. I can remember growing up in Wisconsin, and you'd see a random stand in front of a farm, and you'd get corn like $10 sign 1.00, and it would be the most amazing corn you'd ever taste. Getting things repaired instead of buying you. I have a hedge trimmer from the 50s. It broke a few weeks ago, so I pulled out some screws and fixed its simple mechanical motor. Works fine again. Edit, chill guys, it's an old corded electric, no circuit board. Photographs on actual photographic paper. I know it's still possible but oh so rare. It's not that it costs significantly more than before, it's that there was no alternative. Photography has gone from a bit of a luxury to something that literally everybody can afford. Privacy. Deleted. Being left the fuck alone. Buying something and just like, owning it. Playing a video game without an internet connection. Not having to provide your email address for every single fucking thing you do. Yeah try getting a quick haircut, what's your phone number me, no I just want my haircut, but we need it for our tracking, how about an email address me, no I just want a haircut. And suddenly people are looking at you like you're a dick. I have even tried the whole no thanks I just want a haircut it doesn't matter they are still going to continue asking, I now just make up random shit best part is I go to the same place and they know my face and give me the squinty eyes. Single income families buying a home. Buying a home in general. Good quality fabric in clothing. I have clothes from the 90s and 80s from my mother that still hold up today. These days, I'm lucky if my shirt isn't saggy and misshapen within a year. When my grandpa died I inherited a lot of his clothes. I wear so much of his LL Bean clothes from the late 90s slash 20,000s. They hold up better than most things I could buy. 
being able to go out every Friday after work and being able to afford it. Went out with my cousin. Bought food, 4 drinks for myself and my fiancé. Came up to $120. Going out got freaking expensive. Items not requiring a subscription each month. Also every little appliance you purchase requiring some app or your email to verify your identity just to use the thing. You're a coffee maker. You don't need my email you just need to make me a coffee once every 3 mornings. A yearly family vacation out of the area lasting for dash 10 days. Legroom on an airplane. Having a meal on a flight as well. Getting a handwritten litter. I actually got one from a Jehovah's Witness last week. A company funded pension plan in the private sector. My wife's grandmother retired from one of our local health insurance companies over 30 years ago with a full pension. She's 91 and still receives her pension, although the insurance company was acquired by a larger organization a few years back. It's a modest pension, but it allows her to live a comfortable and independent life. Nowadays, companies only offer 401k or similar retirement plans. Outside of education government, very few private sector companies offer pension. I'm fortunate enough to be employed by one that still does. Deleted. Being able to afford having only one person working in a relationship. Yeah my dad as a college dropout restaurant manager made six figures, had two houses and two new cars in the 1980s. Mom just raised us kids. 35 years later my wife and I have two bachelors and a masters between us, three jobs and can just barely afford a house that's 50% the size of one of my parents houses from the 80s. We make less combined than our dads did alone with no degrees. Bullshitting your homies on the playground. Had this revelation last week when talking to my nephew. His friend told some blatant lie I guess, 9 year old and everyone pulled out their brand new iPhones to Google his lying ass. Remember when someone would say something and you just believed them? Even if you didn't, you were in for an hour long argument on how it wasn't possible for Marilyn Manson to remove his ribs to suck his own dick. It is a luxury because it takes either credit or popularity to just be believed these days. Shit, I doubted half my professors just because they were old. Deleted. Not having to sign up to hear about the latest offer, when I just want a $2 item as a one-off. Pork belly. Used to be a bad cut of meat that was disposed of or given to the poor for dirt cheap prices. Then rich people realized that the poor made it delicious, which then caused prices to skyrocket. Same with chicken thighs, brisket, and ribs. All the cheap barbecue cuts are expensive now. Boredom. There's always something to take your attention nowadays. There's literal lifetimes of entertainment on a single streaming service. Phones. There's tons of free and cheap games that can just eat hours of your time. Social media. YouTube, etc etc etc. 20-30 years ago, if there was nothing you wanted to watch on TV, you either sat through it or found something else to do. Games had to be bought in stores, so it was more of a process buying them. Once you had them, you committed to it or bought a new game. Sometimes there was just legitimately nothing to do. You had to get creative with your downtime. Make your own fun. God, I miss having regular downtime and thinking maybe I'll paint or quilt or something. I can't do much of anything unless it can be done in super tiny bursts. Annual vacations. Working hard to put yourself through college, buy a house, and a truck. Surviving on entry level wages. Games that released mostly complete, stable. Games that didn't have microtransactions. Games that are not live service garbage that dies less than a year later. Games that you unlock content cosmetics through actually playing the game, 
and not buy excessively grindy progression systems, to entice you to buy XP boosts that is time skips, or buy microtransactions. I'm mostly an indie guy now. There are some AAA games I love but indies mostly blow them out of the water in terms of value these days. That being said there are lots of indie games that don't release in a complete state. Avoiding people by simply not answering the landline phone, this would make the person calling assume you are just not home. We introverts no longer have this luxury with cell phones, texting, online status when logged into a PC so co-workers can I mew, etc. I simply do not answer if I can't don't want to. The rude person is the one who expects you to drop everything just because they want to talk right now. Being able to buy a decent standard home on one modest salary. Years ago my ex and I broke up but had to live together still in a really awkward situation because we literally couldn't afford to be single. It was a rough time. Lots of people are saying owning a house but owning anything is at this point with how much subscription services are pushed. A single family detached house. More like owning a house in general, or even land. Word used to be just installed with your Microsoft software. Now you have to pay each month year. You can still buy the office suite as a one-time purchase, they just hide it and try to push you towards a subscription. For example. HTTPS colon slash slash www dot microsoft dot com slash en dash us slash microsoft dash 365 slash p slash office dash home dash student dash 2021 slash cfq 7 ttc 0 h 8 n 8 question mark active a tab pivot colon overview tab ads only on tv or the newspaper or radio now it's ads every fucking where youtube one minute video Two 15 second ads. Unskippable. Streaming service you pay for. Watch promos for shows we want you to watch before you watch the show you want to watch. Music service. Pay premium for no ads. Random website. Ads plus tracking cookies for ads. Social media. At every 3-4 posts plus collecting data to show you more ads plus targeted ads. Amazon. Here are some sponsored products you might like. I'm so tired of everything revolving around ads and collecting data to show you ads that are catered to you. It's like a freaking hell loop. Leaving your family behind to start your life at 18 or even younger. Now, folks be living with their parents until they're 45, saving up for 100 square FT closet that costs $2000 a month in what barely passes as not a slum. Deleted. Cheap farmers market produce and baked goods. Now everything is marked as organic or artisan and costs double. Apartments. I could get a one bedroom apartment in the state of Wisconsin back in 1997 for under $500. Now that same apartment $1800. Deleted. Both. The 80s started a lot of signs that society is changing not because of tech but business practices. The technology did make it where it became way more common to hear about it. A pension you could retire on. Buying a house while being middle class. Meals on domestic flights. A car paid in full. Full tank of gas for 20 bucks 1.75 for a pack of Marbreads 260 channels of cable, 34 bucks. Solid wood furniture. Reminder that 20-30 years ago was 1993 to 2003, for all the people responding with things from the 60s 70s. Affordable healthcare. I'd also say that medical practitioner's culture, in the US, overall has deteriorated incredibly fast. It feels like they are burdened by their patients now. Even well before COVID, the attitude of are you sure you are not faking it has ballooned beyond belief. It takes a village mindset. It does take a village, 
but unfortunately that's all the further people will go is telling you, they aren't actually willing to help out. It's always it takes a village, you're doing great, you got this. Or every time you even slightly seem like you're not handling parenting perfectly, instead of advice and help you get judgmental ass stares or get shit talked about your parenting skills and how they would do better. Behind your back of course, to your face you're an amazing parent. Not getting felt up at airports. Having your own row on an aircraft. I flew to Hong Kong two years ago, when you still had to quarantine upon arrival. There was only about 50 people on the plane, a 747. The cabin crew redirected us all from our original seats so we had a whole row each, it was great. Deleted.